Psychiatrists aren't usually thought of as revolutionaries. If anything, such a profession requires a strict compliance with disorder classification and a calculated treatment of human biology. Little room is made for revolutionary thought. However, one psychiatrist who inspired everyone from Malcolm X to Che Guevara is notably distinct from the rest. France Fanon, who developed a psychiatric and philosophical system of ideas enmeshed in negritude, Marxism, and existentialism, is the psychiatrist who started a revolution. Born on the French-colonized island of Martinique, Fanon was in a position of slim advantage in the year 1925. His family belonged to the Black Bourgeoisie, a social group that enjoyed a sort of middle-class privilege that was hard to come by for those who were colonized. Unfortunately, this came at a cost. His family followed certain principles to uphold their status, such as the constant need to assimilate and identify with white French culture. Nonetheless, one of the advantages was the fact that Fanon was able to go to the most prestigious high school in Martinique. There he was taught by M.A. César, an advocate of negritude, an affirmation and acknowledgement of the value of being of black African origin, and a future poet and politician. Fanon was only previously aware of France's history, and César's teachings of black history and pride left him both disillusioned and inspired. After the fall of France to the Nazis, French naval troops were left to take control of Martinique. They quickly implemented an oppressive and racist regime, ruling over the islanders with violence and abuse. The disgust generated by this period led to Fanon's observation that they had taken off their masks and now acted as authentic racists. His feelings of alienation soon grew intolerable, and he quickly left the island at 17 to join the Free French Forces, a group that aided the resistance fighters against the Nazis in the mainland. In the war, he continued to witness racism. After freeing European women, he noticed that they would prefer to dance with fascist Italian prisoners rather than hang out with their liberators. After the war, Fanon studied psychiatry in Lyon, and would at times attend lectures by the phenomenologist Merleau-Ponty. Here he noticed a more simplistic racism than in Martinique, one that was prejudiced to anyone of a darker skin. This observation led him to explore Marxist and existentialist ideas in his Essay for the Disalienation of Blacks. Fanon would go on to do his residency in psychiatry under a radical Catalan psychiatrist named Francois Tosquel, who created a form of psychotherapy that mixed philosophy with neurobiology. He would have a great influence on Fanon's later work, arguing that colonization formed a psychic structure in the colonized that must be rid of through decolonization. During this time, Fanon wrote his famous Black Skin White Masks, an analysis of the negative psychological effects of colonization on black people. His wife would write most of it as he dictated. He also was given the position of chief of staff at a psychiatric ward in colonized Algeria. There, he treated the distress of the colonized and colonizer, radicalizing his methods of treatment as he went, including the application of sociotherapy to connect with his patients' cultural backgrounds. As the Algerian independence movement gained traction, Fanon recognized that he could no longer work in an institution that was on the side of inhibiting decolonization. He resigned and subsequently committed himself fully to the Algerian revolution, strategizing and writing for various pro-independence publications. Fanon would travel across Algeria, studying the psychological life of Algerians across the country, and in doing so gaining further knowledge of the psychological trauma evident in occupation. Sadly, Fanon was diagnosed with leukemia. In his last few years, he would write The Wretched of the Earth, his most radical work that directly addressed violent revolt for the colonized. He passed away on December 6, 1961. Fanon has an interesting assortment of influences. Initially, he found inspiration in the works of Amé César. Although César's advocacy for black pride were crucial in allowing Fanon to realize the dangers of assimilation, he found little hope in using such views as a comprehensive solution against colonizing forces. His more ethics-based philosophy emerged from his readings of Hegel, Marx, and Ursel, well in France. Fanon would come to argue that the dialectic could be the method by which the bothered or alienated self reaches an appropriate response to the traumas of racism. He also embraced phenomenology's idea of the pre-conscious self in exploring the psychological effects of racism. 
Finally, Fanon's most radical views emerged from his appreciation of Sartre's existentialism. Sartre's formulation of the self as a process of autonomous creation in which one chooses who they will become affirmed Fanon's view that the colonized must turn away entirely if they wish to construct a healthy identity. Black Skin White Masks, his most famous work, largely involves itself in explaining African phenomenology. The central metaphor, as the title suggests, argues that black people must wear white masks in order to get by in a white world. This is due to the self's encounter with the trauma of being categorized by others as inferior simply due to their externally imposed racial identity. The white European culture requires some sort of other in order to define itself, and black people have historically filled this role. This process of othering, called negrification, has three systematic effects. Firstly, it promotes negative attitudes towards blacks. Secondly, it normalizes the oppressed to desire aspects of white culture. And finally, it offers a comprehensive perspective with no room for alternatives. Fanon suggests that the colonized could treat this problem by recovering a sense of identity that is independent from the imposing entity. Not only could they see themselves as valued, but could also construct a perspective independent from the racial mainstream. This idea of a solution is further expanded upon in Fanon's decolonization theory, prominent on his controversial The Wretched of the Earth. This book has been considered to be a handbook for black revolution, beginning with a preface by Sartre and elaborating upon Fanon's ethical commitment to the right of every human being to have their dignity recognized by others. Its discussions on violence and revolution have been considered to be quite controversial. Fanon argues that violence is something fundamental to colonization. The colonizers use oppressive tactics such as abuse, labor, or other means of subjugation to occupy the land and mines of the oppressed, hence they are the first to bring about violence. This leaves the colonized with a difficult choice. They can either continually accept the abuse, or as Fanon puts it, they can throw the violence back in the face of the perpetrators. According to Fanon, this is justified in the sense that the oppressed are not treated nor considered to be humans. Hence, they aren't bound to the principles that are supposed to apply to humanity, such as peace and freedom. The colonizers can then be treated with the same disregard for human life and value. Furthermore, the colonizers appear to be only willing to communicate through the language of violence. Hence, if any change or negotiation is to be enacted, it must come through a language that they can understand. Although Fanon has been criticized for advocating for violence in this book, a close reading suggests a more subtle point. Fanon is more so an opponent of nonviolence, recognizing that radical solutions are to be avoided for the most part, up until the point where all other solutions have been corrupted by the very violence first introduced by the oppressor. Fanon's warnings appear somewhat unheard, such as his cautionary observation that false decolonization would occur when the oppressed would come to trust the process of negotiations between native elite classes and former colonizers as a path to freedom. We've seen several formal colonial African and Latin American states succumb to client statism due to this less radical attempt at liberation. Nonetheless, his writings did hold widespread influence. Anti-colonial and national liberation movements across the world have used his words to enact real change. Che Guevara and Malcolm X have directly taken inspiration from his work. The Black Panther's 10-point plan contains six points that refer to his work. And Fanon has been seen as a central influence to the Latin American left movement, especially in Bolivia's indigenous revolution. Overall, Franz Fanon believed that we all deserve moral consideration, and that no human being is dispensable. His principles and fight for justice continue to inspire scholars, activists, and victims of oppression throughout the world. Mm -hmm.